Um, but don't you think that the fact still remains that the theatrical release is still the most efficient way of making contact with your customers? I mean, there isn't any other strategy in place to tell people about movies, really. Major strategy. No, no, no. We're, we're the, the, well, our experience with, um, with uh, Hollywood companies in particular is they're absolutely trying to use the internet to create the buzz and create the, the to, to tie in with the, the but, release cycle. But, but does the internet go first or does the theatrical release it's go first? It, it's both. It's so, a combined um, effort then. So well, Die Hard, the new... It's on a plane, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, all about, it's all about integrated messaging. At the end of the day, it's not any particular platform. You have to speak on, a whole, on, on, on every single platform. I thought Jamie showed us really nicely you know, how MySpace works as a promotional tool. Um, but when you think about the big, big releases, there isn't a platform that's missing. In fact, they invent platforms for, uh, for advertising. And so you've had, you've had some uh, real experience in this area from a music perspective Absolutely. specifically um, in a market that there are no record companies anymore. Um, could you speak to it a bit? Yeah. And, and <clears throat> the other thing to note here is that uh, people watch the, uh, the, what do you call them, the previews on, on QuickTime, the, uh, the little shorts that come up. And that's a hugely marketed... I, I think what movie companies are starting to look at now, and, and it's, it's not a great analogy, but if you take Snakes on a Plane, there was such a buzz on that movie, I, I, I can truly say so many people went to see it because of the internet buzz and because of these little feeler and tidbits that uh, movie companies are starting to put out now. And movie companies are starting to use elements of their films in their pre-marketing of films. So they'll spend months before films come out looking for ways that they can seed ideas and to try and get more people to that first it's all about the opening week I think so. the discussion is two different ones one is the web as a media for the marketing of movie and with respect to your notion David um, should um, internet distribution occur simultaneously with theatrical distribution um, the issue that will affect that more than anything else is piracy. Yeah. The disparity between the price of a theatrical admission and the cost of going into a cinema with a high definition camcorder and the value of that product on the street is equivalent to contraband in drugs or any other product that is contraband. So we're passing legislation that makes it illegal to have high-definition, handheld, miniaturized high-def cameras. Not going to stop it. You're going to have, uh, you know, uh, sensing devices as you enter the theater. There'll be a solution to that. When you have the time gaps between or the sequential distribution of media, either geographically or time-wise, you create an opportunity for someone to sell it to those people who conventional distri distribution is not making it available to. And as long as there is a proliferation of miniaturized high-def video cameras and a value of that market, that product on the market, which is enhanced by the delay in availability, you have um, a leak that may turn into a flood from the system, particularly as um, technology gives you better compression and DVD replication gets cheaper. It's just too lucrative for people who are um, find illegal ways to make money. So simultaneous availability may not be a near-term inevitability, but as the piracy off of theater screens grows and attendance decreases, there will be a pressure to close that window. I think there's um, an interim solution which is a window of availability prior to DVD and post-theatrical, a kind of exclusive home cinema window 
quite early after theatrical release, four weeks, and charge a premium price so that people who want the early exclusivity of seeing it in high definition have it downloaded on the web and have it um, enveloped in a DRM so they can't make copies or forward it and they have uh, a home screening window. If that, that probably has the least erosive effect on attendance and would probably not have any margin effect on DVD depending on how many people you invite over to see it. And that could be an incremental market. And as that starts working, people will have more flexibility to then experiment with simultaneous availability. And it's high risk, but so is the piracy leakage. We are fraught with risk, and I happen to agree with you wholeheartedly. With the advent of flat screen television, the, the numbers going down in the purchase price, and the fact that people actually do want to have community in the home now, and the affordability factor. Um, Jeff, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the content creation uh, issue, where Microsoft has gotten involved in actually creating content that actually goes the other way, um, where you're creating content that goes on the web as a test, in, in essence, to see where you can develop ideas yeah. to move forward. Yeah, we've been working with people like uh, Ben Silverman at Reveille um, to, bu to build content for the web. A um, couple of examples. One was um, sponsored by Kraft, which was uh, Chef to the Rescue, so uh, uh, Chef helping um, uh, people to, to, to cook in good time. Um, another one is uh, the big debate, so a sort of fun debate, pros and cons around the big issues like um, uh, should uh, David Beckham go to Los Angeles, things like that. Um, but working very much with the, um, with the, the producers uh, to, to, to create content that works for the web, that encourages um, a, a user-generated aspect as well, because that is critical to have that uh, dialogue between, uh, between us and consumers and consumer to consumer as well, uh, and, and doing it in a way that um, there is a good return on investment for all involved. Uh, and you know, the aim, very clearly, is to, to trial things, to make things work, to then take them on um, to, to other platforms. It was David, if, if you start to think about it, you know, the development process and creating, you know, the development process and creating film, to your point about, you know, from script to production, now with the, uh, the affordability of digital production, you know, being a digital domain, I had the opportunity to see Jim Cameron's original business, uh, business plan. Where, where essentially he talked about where we are today. Um, why do we actually want to ask the studios what their taste is? Why do we actually want to ask the TV networks what their taste is when we can actually develop ideas online, okay, gather an audience, and then move into production seeing that you're actually walking into a studio or a network with a robust user base? Because of the issue of, it, of intellectual property and building up um, a rights library to have a, um, a company. Um, f f from a company point of view, I'd always want to have some ownership of intellectual property before I um, try to invest in digital exhibition, which I think a lot of European producers should seriously think about, um, because that is the only way I can build up a, a strong company. Um, and then I want to sell that to the studio. Why would, you not, why would you not own the content? You see, the new revenue model, I believe, and, I, and MSN was very involved in creating this from a, from a TV and brand perspective, goes back to the question about, or the fact that we're going to see a half a trillion dollars in ad revenue move into online. Okay, and that's traditional media moving into online. So we're sitting in this 